This is Evan Lewis again on Evan E. Sent, and I'm talking, I think, one last time on the thin discs. This time I've been labeling the discs, and I'm using the usual standard sort of metal punches, the square uh, punches that you use with a hammer. And at first I tried just uh, doing it by eye and found the letters were all coming out all higgledy pickledy up and down and sideways and all kinds of things. So I decided I needed to make a jig that would uh, rotate the uh, stamp around a certain amount with each letter and get all the lettering in exactly the correct positions. Uh, so this is about making this little jig. Well, perhaps I should talk about the material I'm using for this project. Uh, I had a piece of steel 80 millimeters in diameter and oh, about 60 um, centimeters long that I got from a scrap metal dealer. And at first he was going to charge me for stainless steel, but he put a magnet on it and found it was magnetic and said, oh no, that's not stainless, you can have it, it's just mild steel, I'll, you can have that. So I went off, went away with this piece, and I'm sure it's stainless steel, it's as hard as anything and, and it never rusts. Um, so um, that's the material I'm using to make this, this jig. It is a little bit hard to machine, actually, and um, <clears throat> I needed to put a square hole in it. I don't have any um, brooches. And I thought about making one, but I, you know, with this hard material, I thought that was going to be a bit difficult. So instead, I decided to drill a round hole and put a brass rod in it and mill a groove in the side of the brass rod as a guide for the stamp. And that's worked out very well. Here I'm uh, installing a um, collet chuck with a plan to place a end mill in it uh, to prepare a slot in the side of this brass bar. So here's the E32 collet system that I bought from China quite cheaply. Haven't used it actually a lot, but it seems to be good. And uh, unfortunately it's an imperial one. I'm mostly doing metric stuff, so I don't know why I did that. I first tried to use it without a drawbar, but uh, soon found that it tended to come loose. So I had to make a drawbar, which involved getting an old rusty bolt and turning it down and re-threading it. So there it is just going in. Um, and that just uh, screws into the back of the Morse taper on the collet holder and is screwed up with a nut on the back of the lathe to um, prevent it from coming out. Keep a good grip. Yeah, clamp it up real tight if you want to. So that's the draw bar. And there's the milling tool in place, which happened to fit nicely in the Imperial collet. So now I've removed the compound slide from the lathe and uh, I've made this mount with a spigot for the small lightweight milling attachment which I got from China too. has a few little problems with it but it uh, did work fine for this project. It's okay for small things like this. The work is held in this sort of uh, mini vise using uh, cap head screws to clamp it up. Takes a little bit of setting up. Here I'm using a special C spanner to tighten the nut on the front of the collet holder. And unfortunately, when the uh, collet set arrived, it didn't come with a spanner. So I had to order that separately and uh, the best way I could find to order it was to order a set of three. When it arrived, the package had burst open. One of the three was missing and of course it was the one I wanted. I've had problems before where the milling tool just exits the slot you're cutting and then grabs the very edge of the material violently and throws it across the room uh, and it's not held very securely in this little vise so it'll come out and really fly around the place so that's a bit scary. So I'm a little cautious about bringing the uh, milling tool right out of the slot. I take it almost the end and then turn around and come back again. Um, there are two different ways the milling tool can ride on the work. 
uh, if it's going over the surface like a wheel of a car driving along so it's pushing down on the edge it's cutting uh, it tends to ri ride up over the surface especially if you've got some slack in your, in your uh, cross slide um, some uh, backlash that can be quite nasty uh, a jam uh, it's probably better to have the milling tool turning in the opposite direction where it's undercutting the area where it's actually taking material off. Trying one of the square punches in the slot I've just created shows it does fit very neatly um, and the punch actually comes up flush with the surface of the, of the brass which is what I was aiming for but what I didn't take into account was the curvature of the hole it fits in. It should perhaps be a little bit tighter but it worked out well in the end. Making the body of this device is uh, just some simple turning, so I haven't shown that. But now that it's done this far, I'm placing it in a four-jaw chuck so that I can drill an off-center hole and bore it out to match the size of this brass part. Uh, and uh, so I've taken a three-jaw chuck out, put the four-jaw in, but decided the uh, jaws uh, that way around weren't working, so I'm switching the jaws around, which on the four-jaw chuck you use the same set of jaws. Uh, on a three-jaw you have to have two sets of, of jaws because of the curvature for the spiral. So, as usual, setting up takes uh, longer than the actual machining, usually. And in the end I actually had two jaws, what I would consider the right way around, and two jaws back to front in order to fit this piece in, offset.
going to have to replace my uh, digital vernier calipers because the old fashioned actual vernier calipers are so hard to use, aren't they? Although you like this uh, little screw here for adjusting them, which the digital ones don't usually have. Sixteen point five. My boring bar is not quite straight. <coughs> Did that hit your toes? Didn't hit mine. It's not that heavy. Far off. Very close. Wouldn't have thought it was a millimeter out. So a millimeter in diameter would be half a millimeter in radius. Perfect, I'd say. So close and oh, a surprise. Thought it was looking like that. Yeah, it's just about spot on where it is. Why? I don't know. Troughs there at all. It's 
basically a spring pass. screw in the side here to clamp this thing in place and uh, then I have to rig up some system for rotating the thing around in little steps. <laughs> <laughs> 